Welcome to Passion for Sound, the channel dedicated to thorough and honest reviews of headphones, earphones, DACs, headphone amps, other components and accessories. Basically everything audio related except power amps and passive speakers. My name's Lachlan and my goal is to explore and discuss all kinds of audio topics, even the controversial ones, to help us all find more enjoyment from music. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. A little while ago I reviewed the Matrix Element H here. It's a USB PCIe card for your computer and it's designed to improve the sound of your USB outputs by filtering the power inside the computer and possibly doing a little bit more. And it's that little bit more where I think I may have undersold the Element H last time around. But this is not a review of the Element H, however it will make a cameo shortly. This is actually a review of the JCAT Femto USB card and Femto network card. In both cases, they're similar products to the Element H in the sense that they're both cards, PCIe cards, intended to improve the quality of transmission of audio through network, so LAN, RJ45, and or through USB. When it came time to do this review, I was tempted to go down the path that I did for the Element H and try and come up with some kind of measurements of noise and whatnot, but then I thought more about it and decided decided to return to my roots, which is all about the subjective enjoyment of audio. As I'll talk about shortly, that doesn't mean that there's no basis for what I'm about to share with you, and I'll show the evidence to you shortly as to why I believe what I'm hearing is accurate, but what it does mean is that rather than getting hung up on what I can and can't measure, particularly with my very basic setup here without having any high quality analyzers and the like, instead of focusing on those sorts of measurements, what I wanted to do was talk about the experience of using these and what I could and or could not hear the difference between when using these cards. So I'm going to focus first and foremost on the JCAT cards, but as I said before, I do want to revisit the Element H because I think I was too harsh by focusing most of my review on some measurements and not really giving it the credit of a good quality subjective listening test. For those immediately repelled by the fact that I'm talking about subjective listening tests, please know that there was a very thorough blind listening test applied to this, and I'm going to share the exact results with you of that blind listening test, both the data on screen and my expert explanation of how it all went. One final thing before I start discussing the products is that there's very little to show you in terms of b-roll for this video, they're just computer cards with some components on them and the like. I will share some photos on screen to highlight relevant points, but I'm not going to get into too much glamour video on this one, mostly because the cards are currently installed in my computer. So with that in mind, let's start talking about the particular cards. Both of the JCAT PCIe cards are their Femto range. Now they've got two ranges, there's the Femto range and the XE range. The Femto is their entry point, although it's not at all entry as you'll discover in a moment, and then there's the XE card, which is a high level again. Both of these cards retail for the same amount, which is 435 euros. That equates to about 530 US dollars or 685 Australian dollars. So these are not cheap cards by any stretch. To put that into context a little bit, the Matrix Element H retails for 329 US dollars or about 520 Australian dollars. So it's about two thirds, a little bit more than two thirds of the price of the JCAT cards. And as I'll talk about shortly, I think it's pretty good value and doing a pretty good job, but we'll come to that soon. What all of these cards are designed to do is reject noise coming from the computer circuit and or the computer power supply. And in the case of the JCAT network card, I'm assuming it's also seeking to clean up the signal coming into the computer, say from your local area network or even from the internet. In the case of all three cards, they also use high quality oscillators, which are used for the timing and the very, very very accurate timing of the various digital signals. In the case of both the JCAT cards, they use a high quality oscillator in the Crystec 957, whereas the Matrix Element H does use a slightly lower grade chip, also Crystec, but in this case the 575. In theory, what that should mean is that the JCAT cards do an even better job of rejecting jitter, but whether or not it does, I'm not in a position to measure. What I will describe to you shortly is what I heard when I compared the two cards, but I'm not going to try, as I said before, to get into any sort of measurements because I'm really not equipped to do that justice, and I think it actually takes the focus away from listening enjoyment, and that's what I'm all about, and therefore what I actually want the channel to be all about. So with all that out of the way, let's start talking about the JCAT USB Femto card. This is a standard PCIe card, meaning that it sits into a PCI Express socket 
socket on your computer motherboard. It takes a five volt power supply, either from the internal power supply of the computer or from an external power supply. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Built into the card are jumper switches to allow you to choose which power supply you're using, internal or external, and also to choose whether you want filtering of that power on or off. I can't really see any situations where you'd want to turn the filtering off because filtering of the power is going to lead to better quality power and therefore a better quality, smoother sound. So for all of my testing, I did leave that filtering on. As you'll hear as I go through this review, there were lots of different variations I tried and I had to draw the line somewhere, so the filtering was where I drew it. One thing I really like about the JCAT USB cards is that they've got two outputs. So if you're somebody like me that maybe has a DAC set up for pure listening, such as in my case, the Hugo TT2, and then you might have a different DAC set up for general computing duties, such as in my case, the Shit by Frost 2, in that sort of situation, it's really helpful having two high quality USB outputs. Whilst the quality from the Bifrost 2 in my normal day-to-day -day use is not that important, there are times that I listen to music through it, particularly for testing. And so with that in mind, I think it's really convenient to have two outputs. Another cool thing that's probably only relevant to somebody like me who's testing the device is that you can set up the JCAT to have internal power going to one socket and external power going to the other. That makes it really easy to quickly compare the two and was really helpful for me in my testing. For normal usage though, as you'll hear shortly, I don't see any reason if you've got external power not to put that external power through to both. That does mean you've got to change both jumper switches, but realistically, it's a once-off setup. You're going to put it all together in the way that you need it, you're going to insert it into your computer, close up the case, and that's going to be the last of it. Now that I've introduced the card, let's talk about some of the testing I did. For my first round of testing, I was using external power to the JCAT USB card, and also to the Matrix Element H. And that was so I could do comparisons between the generic motherboard USB sockets, the JCAT USB sockets, and of course the Element H USB sockets. I want to send a quick shout out to Clay from Geesler Audio. That's an Australian company known for their quality DACs and power supplies. The reason I want to give them a shout out is that Clay was kind enough to send me one of his new Craftwork 2 dual linear power supplies that I was able to use for all of my testing of these devices. The linear power supply is absolutely gorgeous. It's in a nice slick case. It comes with a fairly compact transformer that's external to the case, and it's worked beautifully for everything I needed. It's also a variable power supply, which allowed me to provide 12 volts of clean power to the Matrix Element H, and five volts through to the JCAT cards. So I want to say once again a huge thanks to Clay and also highly recommend that if you're in the market for linear power supply, you do take a look at Geisler Audio. I'll put a link down below. I'm not conducting a full thorough review of the linear power supply at this time, but I can recommend that it's worked seamlessly, it's kept relatively cool throughout, and it's just been a joy to use. So keep in mind for this next test that both cards were powered through the external Geisler Audio power supply, while of course the internal generic motherboard USB socket is just using the regular old computer power supply. And I had it all set up this way because my first test was designed to tell me whether or not there was even a difference between using the Element H and or the JCAT card versus the stock USB output from the motherboard. Back in my Element H view, there was some evidence that perhaps the generic motherboard USB output was just as good or maybe better in some regards than the Element H. That was based on some basic background noise measurements I was making, and as I said before, I do think I sold the Element H a little bit short. So this time 
time around, I wanted to include it in the testing to give another chance, but also to see how it stacked up against the JCAT. The way I did this testing was I had a fully blind test setup. I had a generic USB-A to USB-C cable connected to the Matrix Mini i Pro 3 behind me here, which is going to come up for review soon, so make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see that. So I was using the Mini i3 Pro as my DAC. I had that connected using AudioQuest Yukon XLR interconnects down to the Burson Soloist. The Burson Soloist was then driving my 64 Audio U12T. Now I specifically chose those because A, they're very resolving, but also because they were going to isolate any external background noise and help me really hone in on any differences from those cards. The final piece to the puzzle was that my wife kindly agreed to come in and switch the cables without me knowing what was plugged into what. I was using the very lightweight Play PCM Win app so that I could very quickly and easily just hit play. I had one track loaded, I used one track for the entire test. In this case it was Soon As I Get Paid by Keb Mo. And so I was very quickly and easily with that app able to just hit play every time she let me know that she'd changed the cable over. I asked her to be as random as possible with the connections and to feel free to connect the same thing multiple times in order to potentially trick me if I wasn't able to hear the differences clearly. One thing I should mention is that with the Play PCM app, it does show you on the right hand side what devices are plugged in by a numbering system. It's a very basic generic system, but it would say things like one Mini i Pro or six Mini i Pro, depending on which socket was plugged in. In. To fix that, what I did was just drape a cloth over the right hand side of my screen so I couldn't see which device was plugged in. All I could do was see and press the play button whenever she gave me the signal. So it was a completely blind test with three possible variables. Option one was the generic motherboard USB, option two was the JCAT USB card, and I had both of them set up the same so either socket it didn't matter, and option three was the matrix element H. We got started and we had 20 rounds for me to guess which was which. I'll show you the results on screen now, and what you'll see was that it was fairly easy for me to generally tell the difference between the motherboard USB and either of the external PCIe cards. What was more difficult though, was I had a lot more trouble separating the Matrix Element H from the JCAT USB card. The reason for that was that when I listened to each of the different outputs, I found that the generic motherboard USB socket tended to have a harsher, glarier sound, and also less sense of space in the overall sound. Moving across to the other two, it was very easy to hear that there was a greater sense of space and ease and smoothness in the sound. Where things got a little bit tricky though, is that to my ears, the Matrix Element H had a slightly warmer, fuller sound overall, but we're talking like a 2% difference here. And then the JCAT card was just a little bit brighter and cleaner sounding overall. What tripped me up slightly was that occasionally the extra brightness from the JCAT card would trick me into thinking I was listening to the generic USB socket. As you'll see from the results though, even though that was the case, I was still 60% accurate in in terms of guessing which connection was which, even though it was a completely blind test. If you look at the table on screen, what you'll also notice is that I've got a partially correct column. What that partially correct column is all about is that one of the things I was most interested in was whether or not I could tell either of the cards from the generic USB socket. And in doing that, I was 80% accurate. What that tells me is that there is a definite sonic difference between the generic USB socket and either of these PCIe cards. Now of course the percentage of guessing which one was right, I had a 2 in 3 chance of guessing. So you need to take that 80% with a little bit of a grain of salt, but at the same time the general 60% accuracy when I was choosing between all three does show that I was able to hear differences. As you'll see across in the right hand column, there were times that I was uncertain what I was hearing. The most common confusion for me being not being certain whether I was listening to the generic USB socket or the JCAT USB card because of that little bit of extra brightness the JCAT had over and above what the Element H had. In a couple of cases, I was also unsure whether I was listening to two or three being the Matrix or the JCAT because I knew for sure that we'd moved away from the generic USB socket, but I wasn't always clear whether we'd gone to the Element H or the JCAT. And on that note, there's another important thing I want to point out. If you have a look at the data here, every time it was moving from the generic USB socket, which is number one, every time we went from one to either two or three, I was 100% accurate in knowing that we'd gone to one of the external PCIe cards. In other words, it was really easy to hear when the improvement was made 
or in this case, when the noise and the background issues with the generic USB socket was taken away from the Sonic presentation. So in my mind, looking at all this data and having been through the experience of doing the testing, there is no doubt in my mind that both the JCAT and the Element H PCIe cards make a significant Sonic improvement compared to the generic USB socket. Now, before I go any further, I do want to flag that at the prices you're paying for these sorts of devices, they're not something you should rush out and buy as your first or second purchase. These are something you add in when you've got all the other pieces of the puzzle in place and you're looking for that last five to 10% improvement. They're not a huge jump, I'm not suggesting they're a huge jump, but they are noticeable and they are significant if you've got the rest of the pieces in place. Before I move away from this test and focus back purely on the JCAT USB card, I just want to wrap things up in terms of the JCAT versus the Matrix Element H. To me, both of them produce beautiful sound and are a significant improvement over the onboard USB socket on the motherboard. That's with the caveat that they're driven by a linear power supply and external power supply to get the absolute most out of them. I think both cards do perform quite well with internal power, having done some testing of both. But I do think if you're going to go out and spend more than 300 US dollars on a component like this, you really should be getting the most out of it by adding on an external power supply if you can. As I mentioned in my Element H review, you may be able to find battery packs that will drive these effectively and they might be a fairly cheap option, but otherwise you're going to need to source yourself a decent linear power supply and that may set you back just a little bit. So it is a significant investment and that's why I'm saying you should absolutely only do this as the final step in your system. But if you're at that point and you're looking for an improvement, both are really fantastic options. The Element H to me has a slightly smoother overall sound signature to it with a slightly fuller, richer feel. It's probably a 2 or 3% difference, so it's not night and day, but I could tell the difference when I flip back and forward between the two. The JCAT, therefore, may be ever so slightly more resolving and transparent, but I really think at this point, you're not going to notice the difference unless you've got them right there side by side. And therefore, for me, I think two things would come into play in making the decision between the two. First of all, the Element H has only the single USB socket. If you only need one, this might be all you need and a perfect option. If having two USB sockets is important though, I do think the JCAT is a great choice. The other thing that might come into play is knowing that the JCAT does have the more accurate clock. If you want to know that you've got the absolute best possible precision out of these two cards, then also the JCAT's the one I'd recommend. So with that out of the way, I'm going to put the Matrix Element H aside and just start focusing entirely on the JCAT. One final point, I'll put a link through to the Element H in the description down below. So if that's something you are interested in, you've got the option to buy the Element H, but of course I'll also link through to JCAT for the USB card and the network card as well. Continuing on now with the JCAT USB card, a couple of the things I really wanted to test was how it performed with internal versus external power. In both cases, with the filtering still applied by the card itself. And what I found was that there was a significant difference when you used external power from a quality power supply like the Kraftwerk 2 from Geisler. The sound using the internal PC power supply, and mine's just a generic normal power supply, nothing special, it was still better than the generic USB socket, but it definitely wasn't as good as the external linear power supply. So as I said before, you could buy one of these and run it from the internal power supply in your computer, but I do think if you're going to make the investment, you might as well go all out and get yourself an external external linear or battery power supply. One final thing I wanted to test was how the JCAT performed when connected up to a galvanically isolated DAC. I used the Bifrost 2 for this test and technically shit don't claim that it's actually galvanically isolated, but they've done everything they can to minimize noise coming from the USB circuit of the computer and into the DAC. In theory, that should negate some of the issues around power supply quality and the like, but I was interested to see if the clocking accuracy of the JCAT card could still improve the sound with something like the Bifrost 2. And the good news is that it absolutely does. The difference may be slightly less than with something like the Mini iPro 3. It's really hard to tell because they're obviously completely different DACs with completely different outputs and all the rest. But I would say that I think I was hearing slightly less difference in going from the generic USB to the JCAT using the Bifrost 2 compared to when I used the Mini i Pro 3 to go from the generic USB to the JCAT. So both do provide improvements, but if you've got a galvanically isolated DAC, the improvement might be 80% of what you hear with a non-galvanically isolated DAC.
So at this point, it's really clear to me that the JCAT Femto USB card is absolutely a brilliant product. If you're looking for that final five to 10% improvement from your PC audio. And the same is true for the Matrix Element H. The JCAT may be slightly better than the Element H, but you are also paying a bit more for it. Having said that, JCAT also have their XE range, which is more expensive again, and I'm assuming with better componentry, better circuitry and the like, it might do even better again, but I haven't yet heard it. All I can say for now is I definitely would recommend the JCAT Femto USB card. And with that in mind, it was now time to turn my attention to the JCAT Femto network card. So this is the exact same idea as the USB card, except now, instead of using two USB sockets, we've now got two RJ45 sockets for your network. The JCAT network card is a bit simpler than the USB card in the sense that it doesn't have the various jumpers. It does allow for internal or external power, but there's no jumpers to choose which one it uses and no jumpers to choose whether there's filtering applied or not. So that makes it a really simple plug and play solution where you connect it, you apply power from either an internal or an external source with external once again being preferable and then away you go with your networking. There's obviously multiple ways you can set this up from a networking point of view, whether you wanna have your computer receiving internet through the generic motherboard RJ45 socket, and then you can bridge the two outputs to two different streaming devices, or you can have your internet coming into one of the JCAT RJ45s and your streamer coming out of it. How I've got it currently set up here in my office is I've got the internet coming into one of the JCAT sockets and then I've got an output going to a switch that then supplies my Mini i3 Pro here and also my Raspberry Pi. So there's lots of different variation. One issue you may have is Windows and its weirdness around bridging network connections. But if you can get it set up and working, which I did, it's an absolute breeze to share your internet connection through to the JCAT card and then spit out whatever streamed audio you want to. So my testing with the JCAT network card required me to look at it in a couple of different ways. Firstly, by seeing if it made a difference when streaming music out to the Mini i Pro 3 behind me here, and then also seeing if it made a difference when streaming something like Cobas or Tidal directly from the internet through the JCAT. The first test I did was streaming a local file, so things stored on my hard drive, through to the Mini i Pro 3 behind me. To start off with, I had the Mini i Pro 3 connected to my usual network switch. That means that I've got my LAN cable coming from the wall socket behind me into a switch, and then that switch provides networking through to the computer, through to the Mini i Pro 3, and also to my Raspberry Pi. So I listened to that setup, and then I removed the RJ45 for the Mini i Pro 3 and connected it straight into the JCAT. So now the stream was coming directly from the computer, not through the network, and in theory, should have been improved by the JCAT card. And the good news is, it absolutely was. The differences were very much the same as what I heard from the USB card. And that is a cleaner sound with a greater sense of space overall. And this all makes sense because anytime you're able to remove background noise from any kind of source, you're going to hear more of the details in the music. It's going to sound more spacious because there's less noise to get in the way of spatial cues. And it's also going to sound smoother. So that's what I'd heard on the USB card. And it was again what I heard with the network card. Ultimately for me, there's not a huge amount more to say that I haven't already said about the USB version of this same approach. Everything was better, it was smoother, it was cleaner, and there was more space. Just like with the USB card, it was quite easy to pick the difference between the two, and every single time, the JCAT network card provided the more enjoyable experience. So straight away at that point, I moved over to testing the JCAT card as an incoming source of network, in this case, for internet streaming services such as Cobas or Tidal. For this round of testing, I was using the Hugo TT2 and the M-Scaler, connected up via USB to the JCAT USB card, Card and taking a stream from Cobas via Rune, but using the JCAT network card as my incoming socket for my internet connection. I have to admit, I was a bit skeptical when doing this setup because I figured all of that data will have come all the way from the internet through whatever generic router my internet provider has given me, through all of the generic cabling in my walls, out the socket, and through my generic Cat5 or Cat6 cable into my computer. So to have that one higher quality piece at the end of the chain, I was really suspect as to whether it would make a difference. Now I say that because at this point in the testing, you might be sitting there thinking, I'm going to have expectation bias that it's automatically going to improve things. 
but my expectation was actually that it probably wouldn't improve things given the, as I said, the number of different things potentially negatively influencing the signal before it even got into my computer. All I can tell you is that it still managed to make a difference. The sound quality listening to Cobas via the RJ45 on the JCAT card was noticeably cleaner, more spacious, all the same stuff again. Without knowing all the ins and outs of it, I can only assume that the JCAT card is doing a better job of receiving the data getting accurate timing on that data, and also making sure that there's not noise transmitted from the incoming data through and into my computer. So even though there's all of that generic, potentially low quality devices and cables between my computer and where the source file has come from, that final step, it seems is cleaning up and improving the signal to the best of its ability. And it's enough that it makes a significant and a noticeable difference. So to bring all this to a conclusion, I would say that the JCAT range of cards, be it the USB or the network card, are both absolutely worth considering if you're a computer user for streamed audio, either streaming from the computer going out or streaming from the internet coming in. In both cases, they make a significant difference, both in terms of cleaning up the network signals and then also cleaning up the USB signals going out to your DAC. I can't stress enough that these are final pieces of the puzzle type devices and you absolutely shouldn't go out and spend money on these if you're running a three four hundred dollar desktop setup this is something you buy when you've already got the DAC and the amp and the headphones that you're happy with it doesn't mean of course that you can't upgrade those things down the track but my point is you're not going to get value out of these jcap products or the matrix element h until everything else is at a certain level you're also going to get greater improvements in my experience by spending that same money on other upgrades until such time as you're settled on your DAC, your amp and your headphones at that point though the jcat network card and the jcat usb card should absolutely be something Thing that you look at. They're very easy to install, they're very easy to use because essentially they're plug and play, and they do make a noticeable and significant improvement to the sound. Don't forget of course that you also have to factor in some kind of external power to get the absolute most out of them, but if you're thinking of going all out and buying both, do keep in mind that you can buy something like the Kraftwerk 2 linear power supply that I've got sitting up on top of my computer behind me. You can pick one of those up to drive both of them from a single power socket and in a relatively small case. Not actually that small, but kind of that small. So it's a great option for your end game system, but it is something that I would recommend only for those more end game systems. If that's something that appeals to you, I'll put links down below, as I said before, through to the JCAT network card, the JCAT USB card, the Matrix Element H card, and also to Geisler Audio, so you can check out his power supplies. If you found this review useful, as always, I'd love it if you'd hit like and subscribe. I've got plenty of other great gear coming for review soon, including the Mini i3 Pro that I mentioned in this review and used for a lot of my testing. It's a great little device. For now though, I'll leave you to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.